Hello and good morning, boys and girls. It is Miss Olvera. I am back. It is week four, day three of our daily read out louds. Now, today I will continue reading Mr. Will Needs to Chill. So I will re I'll be reading, let's see, Monday I read chapters one and two. Tuesday I read chapters three and four. So today is Wednesday and I will be reading chapters five and six. So let's get started. I hope you all are having an amazing day the, today. I know I am. Okay, here we go. So chapter five, dried mush and cold gruel. It was really quiet when we got to the vomitorium for lunch that day. Everybody was afraid of what Dr. Carbles might do next. Me and the gang waited in line until we reached Miss LaGrange, our lunch lady. Miss LaGrange is strange. One time, she wrote a secret message in the mashed potatoes. That was weird. What's for lunch, Miss LaGrange? I asked. Or asked Michael. Today I'm serving a bowl of dried mush with a piece of stale bread, she replied sadly. The mush looked gross. Mush is a food, asked Alexia. It is now, Miss Lagrange replied. I'm under direct orders from Dr. Carbles, and tomorrow we will have cold gruel. Gruel? What's that? asked Neil. You don't know. You don't want to know. Miss LaGrange replied. Well, can we get dessert? I asked. Dessert? Said, said Miss LaGrange with a snort. Are you kidding? No dessert? I asked. And at that moment, a voice came out of a little speaker next to the cash register. Dessert is for losers! Said the voice. Eat your dried mush and stop complaining. You kids are lucky to get any food at all. It was Dr. Carbles. There was a little video camera next to the cash register. I've got my eye on you, AJ, said Dr. Carbles. Don't try any funny stuff or you will be in big trouble. We found an empty table and we sat down. And then I looked at my bowl of the mushy, of the dried mush. I'm not eating this, I said. Me neither, said everyone else. Except Ryan, of course. Ryan will eat anything, even stuff that is not food. I'll try it, he said. So Ryan dipped his spoon into the dried mush. Then he brought the spoon up to his lips, and I was already grossed out. And then Ryan opened his mouth. I thought I was going to die. Then Ryan put the spoon in his mouth. Isn't this exciting? Ooh. Then Ryan swallowed the dried mush. <clears throat> Gross! I looked at Ryan, and then and then Michael looked at at Ryan, and then Andrea looked at Ryan, and then Neil looked at Ryan, and then everybody was looking at Ryan. Not bad, Ryan finally said. It tastes like pudding. Pudding. We all dipped our spoons into the dried mush. Actually, it wasn't bad once you put sugar on it. But even so, everybody was in a bad mood during lunch. Recess had been canceled, and after we finished eating, we were told to go out in the playground where Dr. Carples was waiting for us. Are we going to play a game? asked Andrea, hopefully. No, said Mr. Dr. Carbles. Games are for losers. Today, you're going to learn how to march. March, 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 march. What? Pringle up, Dr. Carble shouted through his bullhorn. Forward, march, left, right, left, right. It was horrible. Marching is no fun at all. While we were marching back and forth, I looked over to see if the ding-dong truck was parked outside the school, and it wasn't. Mr. Will was nowhere to be seen. Left, right, left, right, 
Dr. Carbles was mar barking. Where do you think Mr. Will went? Michael, oh wait, he whispered. Where do you think Mr. Will went? Asked Michael. Maybe he went to Dirk School, whispered Ryan. Oh, Dirk School. That's a school on the other side of the town for genius kids. We call it Dork School. Left, right, left, right, left, right. Maybe Dr. Carbles kidnapped Mis Mr. Will and then tied him up in a dungeon. That stuff happens all the time, you know. Stop trying to scare Emily, said Andrea. I'm scared, <laughs> said Emily. Left, right, left, right, left, right, barked Dr. Carbles. Marching makes you strong. Playing silly games makes you weak. Dr. Carbles had us marching back and forth across the playground for a million hundred hours. It was terrible. I'm not sure I remember what ice cream tastes like anymore, said Ryan. I think it's cold and wet, whispered Michael. I'll never know what an octopus push-up pop tastes like, I said. And here's a picture of Dr. Carbles making everybody march. Left, right, left, right, left, right. Someday we'll look back on our childhood, said Alexia, and we'll tell our, our grandchildren what ice cream tasted like. Those were the good old days, I whispered to Alexia. Wait, you mean yesterday, whispered Neil. Left, right, left, right, left, right. Even if we can't eat ice cream anymore, at least we can have frozen yogurt. Frozen yogurt isn't ice cream. It's just not the same, I told her. You're right, Arlo, Andrea admitted. Life wouldn't be worth living without ice cream. And then that's when Emily started to cry. And then that's when we all started to cry. Everybody was whimpering and <laughs> sn sniffling and snorting. It was the saddest day in the history of the world. Oh, no. Okay, that's the end of chapter five. We are going to chapter six. Chapter six says, hooray for Mr. Klutz. It says, the next day when we got to school, I saw the most amazing thing. The guard towers, they were gone. The barbed wire was gone. So were the security cameras and the barking dogs. And most importantly, Dr. Carbles was gone. Standing at the top of the front steps and giving everyone hugs was our principal, Mr. Klutz. He has no hair at all, and I mean none. His head is like a bowling ball with a face on it. He's back, everyone shouting. Mr. Klutz is back. Mr. Klutz is back. He's a nice man. He's not mean like Dr. Carbles. I missed you kids, Mr. Klutz shouted, and then we all came over to hug him. We missed you too, said Emily. Dr. Carbles is mean, said Ryan. Marshall can be a little, you know, strict. A little, said Michael. He drives the tank to school. Did you have a good time at principal camp, Mr. Klutz? Asked Andrea. Oh, yes, he replied. Mrs. Jaffe and I, we met lots of experts in the field of education, and we learned all kinds of new ways of teaching. I think it's going to help you kids learn things. Ugh, learning things is a drag, but at least it'll be better than having Dr. Carbles mean Dr. Carbles. So we don't have to march in the playground anymore? asked Neil. Nope, said, Doc, said Mr. Klutz. We don't have to eat dried mush and cold gruel for lunch? asked Alexia. Never again. Can we have recess today? asked Ryan. Sure. Can we go out for ice cream during recess? I asked hopefully. Sure. Why not, said Mr. Klutz. In fact, you can go get some ice cream right now. Huh? We all said, which is also spelled, huh? Backwards. This was too good to be true. I figured Mr. Klutz was, must be pulling a prank on us. Hmm. We're never allowed to eat ice cream first thing in the morning. That's the first rule of being a kid. Really? I asked. We can have ice cream first thing in the morning? Absolutely, 
said Mr. Klutz. One of the experts at Principal Cap told me that kids learn better when they eat ice cream for breakfast, and he said that the cold, that the cold wakes up your brain. Hmm, that makes sense. Hooray for Mr. Klutz! Everybody started chanting, Hooray for Mr. Klutz! Go ahead, said Mr. Klutz. I think you hear the ding-dong truck coming down the street right now. He was right. The ding-dong truck pulled up across from the school and it was playing the ding-dong jingle. As always. <sighs> I love that song, said Mr. Klutz. Mr. Will is back, someone shouted. Hooray for Mr. Will! Everybody started chanting, Hooray for Mr. Will! Let's go get ice cream, Alexia shouted. Yeah! We were all about to run over to the ding-dong truck, but then we stopped. Wait, Michael said. I don't have any money. Oh, well, neither do I, said Emily. I just have my lunch money, said Andrea. You don't need to use your own money, said Mr. Klutz. He reached into his pocket and pulled out his wallet and he gave each of us a dollar. What? Free ice cream? First thing in the morning? This this couldn't be happening. It was like going to be the greatest day of my life. So we ran over to the ding-dong truck, and that's when the most amazing thing in the history of the world happened. The ding-dong truck was back, but Mr. Will wasn't inside it. It was some other ding-dong guy with blonde hair. He was wearing a white ding-dong uniform, just like Mr. Will. Where's Mr. Will? We asked him. I don't know, the ding-dong guy said. I guess he took the day off. I'm Mr. Bill. So now we have Mr. Bill, not Mr. Will. Hmm, that was weird. Well, I didn't care what the guy's name was as long as he had ice cream, right? So do you have an octopus push-up pop? I asked Mr. Bill. Ever since Dr. Carbles took away my octopus push-up pop, I have been thinking about that octopus push-up pop. Sure, said Mr. Bill, as he reached into the freezer and pulled out one. That will be 79 cents, please. I handed Mr. Mr. Bill the dollar Mr. Klutz had given me, and Mr. Bill looked at the dollar, and he had a puzzled expression on his face. What is puzzled expression? He was what? He was confused. He was... I don't know how much change to give you, he said. What? That was weird. Mr. Will always gave us our change right away. It didn't even seem like he had to think about it. There are a hundred pennies in a dollar, Mr. Bill said. So, ready? All you need to do is take 79 from the 100. So, Mr. Bill looked at the dollar again, and then he looked at me, and then he looked at the dollar and then he looked at me. He looked confused. I don't get it, he said. Can you show me how to do that? What? A ding-dong man who can't make change for a dollar? Mr. Bill must be a real dumbhead. Uh, I guess so, I said. So he handed me a pad and a pencil. Look, I told him as I wrote on the pad. It's simple subtraction. The zero becomes a 10, 10 minus nine equals one, and then the other zero becomes a nine, and then nine minus seven equals two, so you owe me 21 cents. Ah, yes, Miss, Mr. Bill said as he handed me two dimes and a penny. I see it now. Thanks for explaining that to me. No problemo, I told him. I was about to unwrap my octopus push-up pop when I stopped. Hey, I said, that sounded a lot like a math lesson just there. Are you a math teacher? No, don't be silly, said Mr. Bill. I'm just a ding-dong man. Mr. Bill is weird. And that is the end of chapter six. Okay, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed that chapter. Don't forget to watch the next video tomorrow so you can hear chapters 7, 8, and 9. I will do those together. I will do 7, 8, and 
nine. All right, boys and girls, uh, don't forget to keep watching these videos. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. That way you can get these alerts. And I hope you have an amazing day. Bye, boys and girls.